it really matters, I think, that we have the kind of hospitality in our branches that the birds want to come and make their nest in our tree. Most of you don't know this because there was a small group present when this happened, um, but it is a, it's one interesting thing to interview with a group of strangers, and it's another thing to interview with a group of people who already know you. Call, shout out to call committee members who are here today. Um, at the end of every interview, right, I had my interview to be your senior pastor in the spring. At the end of every interview, it's pretty standard for the candidate to ask the panel, or they, well, they ask, uh, sorry, I said that wrong. Let me try that again. It's pretty standard for the, pa for the panel to ask the candidate at the end of the interview, do you have any questions for us? Which is kind of comical, right, when you already know the people and you already know the place. But my question at the end of my interview to the call committee was, why St. John's? We live in an area where there are churches all over the place. There are ELC churches not far away from us. There are other denominations of churches that are also very good, who are really clear, close by to us. There are so many good options in our area. Why is this congregation the place that you choose to make your nest in the branches here? Now, we weren't doing the tree series yet then, so I didn't quite say it that way, but you understand the point. Why is St. John's the church home for you? And almost every single person at the table who responded to this question talked about an experience in a previous congregation of a variety of types, so we're not picking on anybody here, <laughs> of experiences in previous congregations where they felt very clear that either they themselves or someone they loved would not be welcome. And, and this is not back padding, this is simply anecdotal, that when they came to St. John's, this was a priority for them. Welcome was something that was top of the list that they needed to find in order to make a new congregation a church home. And that in one form or another, whether it was a reception of individuals who greeted them out in the narthex, or whether it was our previous pastor Heather who said all are welcome before inviting everyone to the communion table, or any number of other experiences, they experienced the kind of welcome that they hoped to find in this congregation. Now, I think it matters that our branches are the kind of place where people feel comfortable making their nest here with us. Today, as we are in our third week now of our Growing in Generosity series, we have talked about the roots, we've talked about the trunk of the tree, and we are up to the branches now. So we're going to really lean hard into that metaphor of the birds making their nest in their branches. And I have to say, I, I would like to admit that I very strategically had Cindy do her temple talk on this day for this message, but it was really just a coincidence, or maybe it was God's work. I don't know. But I think welcome really matters in the way that people experience the life of a congregation. It can be the difference between a person or a family or a couple choosing to make this their church home or any congregation. And it can even make the difference between people deciding to continue in faith in the life of the church or to take a break or walk away from the life of the church. This is a matter of big consequence as people encounter any congregation, not just ours. But it's a value that draws people to this community, and it's one that I hope that we can intentionally continue to curate. And so today when we hear the, uh, the parable from the Gospel of Luke about the mustard seed, the teeny tiny seed that Amanda reminded us about, that grows into a great tree so much, we'll go one more slide, that we have this massive expanse of branches where the birds can make their nest and make their home in it. I imagine that this is the kind of tree that Jesus is describing that is not only a tree that is safe, but is a tree that is hospitable for the birds where they might want to make their nest. And this is a place that they will continue to come back to and call home again and again and again.
and it makes me think a lot about how we as the people of God might curate the kind of presence and warmth as a life of a congregation in which faith and community alike can grow and flourish together. So, I love the image of the tree today and the parable that Jesus tells from the Gospel of Luke because it has growth baked right into the image. From the seed, to the growth of the tree, to the expansiveness of the branches, the potential and the promise of growth is at the heart of what Jesus is talking about here. And so today, we see that the kind of generosity that Jesus is stirring in our hearts is not necessarily a generosity of time or talent or treasure, although those things are very good, of course. But the kind of generosity that Jesus is stirring in us is a generosity of space. A generosity of space. Which I think has a lot more to do with creating the kind of safety and hospitality where people feel genuinely welcome than it does with simply permitting someone else to use your space or being simultaneously near to others while you're in the same room, kind of like an adult version of parallel play that kids have when they're small. The kind of generosity of space that Jesus is inviting us into with this image of the birds making their nest in the branches of the tree has a lot more to do with the generosity that values the one who is at home in this place among us together. You see, if the branches were the kind of place that repelled the birds, if they were thorny in some way, or if they were weak and brittle and they were sure to break and the nest would fall to its demise, the birds would not make their home there. They would not stay for the long term. But if the branches can create the kind of environment that is not only safe, but it it is hospitable and it offers protection for the birds and their young, they might discover that these branches are good because they provide the possibility of home and growth for others. What good are the branches, in other words, if they do not provide something good for the birds to come and make their nest? If they're just nice to look at, that isn't much. But if the branches can be good for the birds, then they're doing something positive and productive and generative in the life of other creatures that God also values and wants. So now we flip our metaphor and we talk about the life of the church. As the church, if our space, physically and proverbially, is the kind of branches that allow people to do more than just show up, if our branches here together are all just show and flash, the birds are not going to stay for very long, right? If what attracts people to St. John's or any congregation is just about the next exciting program or ministry opportunity, they might come and stay for like a couple months or a year, but then they're going to move on to another congregation who is doing the next, next exciting thing, right? And it will only be a temporary blip in the trajectory of their faith life together. But if what calls birds to this place If what calls people to be part of this community is the deep kind of substance that is rooted in the character of Jesus, the kind of substance that means that when you come through the door, people care about your presence, they greet you with a genuine and warm intention, they might actually know something about your life and what you're experiencing and ask, not expecting the canned, hi, hello, how are you? I'm good, fine, thanks, how are you? but they might actually want your real answer about how your life is going, what is joyful for you, and also what is a struggle right now, then this tree and these branches and all the birds of the nest who already make their home here might just be the kind of place that other birds want to make their nest, where other people want to continue to come back to because it affirms this sense that in Christ we are at home, that in Christ we are welcome, that Christ not only wants us to be part of the crowd of the people who come and receive from God's gracious hand, but that Christ values each and every one who is here, that Christ values and, and wants each and every one who has faith and believes and finds home in this community together. If our branches are simply the allure of numbers, right, that we have so many kids in Sunday school, and we do, and that's very exciting, of course, 
But not only for the numbers, right? If, if all the reason that birds come is because of the allure of numbers, then what we have is not actually welcome, it's just the illusion of it. And our branches will break sooner than later. As the church, as any congregation, not just ours, what good is our growth if it does not provide safety and hospitality for those who encounter this place in this community? What good is the growth of our tree, even if it is broad and tall and wonderful and gorgeous to look at its growth, if it does not provide welcome for all who come here. I want to be really clear about this. Growth and providing these good branches for people to experience welcome and safety and hospitality is not about the numbers in any way. It's not about how many visitors we have, although we are always excited to have visitors, and it's not about how many new members we have, although we always celebrate those too. If we are to be truly generous with our space, as the parable of the mustard seed and the tree tells us, then it is always ultimately about living into Jesus' radical welcome and unconditional love for each and every person, always seeing and embracing and valuing them as a child of God, whom God created on purpose and loves for who they actually are. And if... We can be, if people experience that when they come here, we can be almost guaranteed that what will happen is that their nest will be made in these branches, not only for a short time, but for the long term. If we can offer the kind of radical welcome and hospitality that Jesus demonstrates again and again and again throughout the Gospels, consistently, then what we do is we provide a place where people are both heard and seen for who they actually are without judgment or shame or the presumption that they must hide part of themselves in order to belong. If we can provide the kind of safety and hospitality for everyone who experiences this community and this place, then people are welcomed as they are for the fullness of who God has created them to be. And they don't have to pretend to be someone who will fit in in church in order to belong. Because historically we know that that was a trend for a very long time. If we can provide the kind of radical welcome that Jesus is talking about in Luke's parable today, with warmth and embrace and celebration of each and every one as a valued and beloved child of God, then we might create the kind of tree and continue to grow into the kind of tree that Jesus describes in the kingdom. The good news is that you are already here, which tells me that St. John's is that kind of place for you. You would not be here, I believe, very deeply in my core if you did not experience this kind of congregation and this community to be the kind of place where you were safe, where your family was safe, where the people you love would be welcome unconditionally and without exception or qualification. You are already here because you have deemed this as a good place for your nest to live in the long run. And I'm so glad for that. So what that tells me is that the good news for us today is that we need to continue to lean into that value. We need to continue to look for ways to make it our priority because Jesus did and calls us to do the same. So that when someone encounters this community, whether it's one of you or a new person who's not here yet, they can experience the kind of flourish, nurture, and value that you have experienced that brought you here too. Not because we're in it for the numbers, but because Jesus calls us to be the kingdom of God in the world. So whether it's here or out in the rest of our lives, that we embody God's radical welcome and love that makes safety and thriving for each and every person. So we lean into this value. And we think about how to be generous with our space, generous with our presence, generous with our time and attention to those who come through the door, whether we've talked to them a hundred times or very, meeting them for the very first. Let us give thanks that we can be generous with the kingdom of God in this way because our place is already secure. God's love has deemed that as good and taken care of. So perhaps we can be generous because Jesus calls us to give it away freely and graciously in Christ's name. Let us consider how we can continue to be generous with our space, 
with our love, with our presence, and with God's grace in this place and anywhere we might go. And before you leave today, make sure you stop by the generosity tree. There's instructions out there for how you can participate in ongoing reflection about how generosity works in your life and in your faith and how you will continue to grow and expand these branches of this beautiful tree that we call home. Amen.